the world of vampires is going to get a whole lot bigger, especially with the arrival of Eric Brooks, aka Blade, in his standalone movie during MCU's Phase 5, a movie that will possibly bring in a lot of new characters from the world of monsters, which is why I am here today to tell you about it and give you a first look into things. And with that in mind, let's dive right in. For quite a while now, ever since 2019, when the confirmation about Marvel Studios making a Blade movie was released, fans have been wondering just what kind of a project is Marvel developing behind the scenes. And even though not much has been said about the project, there is more than enough information given to the public that I decided to make a video just for you guys. The character has already made its debut, not in a typical way, but rather in some shape or form, something that I will discuss further down the line. But before I do that, let's see where things are at the moment. And without further ado, let's dive right in. Before I move forward with the video, I am sure many of you know that Wesley Snipes is the one to portray the role of the character back in the day. And not one, not two, but three movies that started a franchise that made its debut in the 1990s, which was one of a kind, not only because of just how good the movie looked, but also because the franchise proved to the world that there was an audience ready to take on the R-rated comic book action that the live action had to give. Years later, at San Diego Comic Con 2019, Marvel Studios President Kevin Feige gave an announcement that the MCU Blade reboot was already in development during the course of the announcement. Right from the start, the actor who would portray the titular character was already in place, with Mahershala Ali taking on the role of Marvel's Daywalker as part of the MCU, with the movie itself presumably being a revamp of the franchise before. Whatever that means, being one of the handful projects of Marvel Studios, it is not surprising at all as to why the movie did not release yet, despite being around three years in development, mainly due to the busy schedule of Marvel, as well as some other things that I'll touch upon in just a second. Scheduled to start filming in October of 2022 in Atlanta, as well as locations across New Orleans, Cleveland, Ohio, and Morocco, we have yet to receive any news about the movie and where the process stands right now. But considering that there has been a change of plans in recent months, one director leaving and another coming in, who also departed surprisingly enough, the movie will probably suffer yet another delay after the first one. Something that is not common with all the Marvel movies. The Blade movie was initially set to release in 2023. However, as I said before, the release date was pushed back due to the reasons that I listed before, and the present release date states that the movie will actually hit the big screens around the world on September 6, 2024, little less than a year after the first scheduled date. Director Bassam Tariq is the one who will hit that like button just like you should if you haven't done so already, but no, in reality, he is probably the one who had a small part to play in the delay of things, as he stepped down from the project due to still unknown reasons, which also led to an inevitable production delay. So without a director in the chair, the movie should not surprise you if it is delayed even further, because even though the script is being written as I speak, there is still the burning question of who will be the one to take the reins for the movie. As for the MCU debut that I talked about before, the character was heavily teased when Mahershala Ali's voice could be heard during a post credit scene in the Eternals movie, as he warns Kit Harington's Dane Whitman about using the ebony blade. Although his voice is only featured in the cameo, it is technically the first appearance of the Daywalker in an actual MCU movie, and I have given a lot of thought to the scene, as it possibly hints at the movie's story and what it could entail. And with that in mind, my educated guess suggests that the Blade movie could potentially be part of the setup for the MCU's take on the Midnight Suns. To put it in short, there are a number of ways for Blade's appearance to carve a certain path for his future in the MCU, with plenty of room for many other long-anticipated Marvel characters to make their MCU debut. Curiously, Eric Brooks' interest in the Ebony Blade could potentially imply that he will have a much larger role 
with my mind going straight towards the fact of him supposedly being part of the next iteration of the Avengers team up. All in all, outside of the bits and pieces we do not know right now, some of the things the movie will surely cover are Eric Brooks' life as an established and experienced hunter, with the story heavily depending on which supernatural villains will appear in his standalone movie. Sure you're ready for that, Mr. Whitman? The 2022 Disney Plus Halloween special Werewolf by Night introduced what some of the threats could be from a variety of monsters all the way to other vampires who have possibly been around in the MCU for centuries. And while this isn't a massive spoiler in and of itself, it definitely means that Marvel is determined to skip Eric Brooks' origin story entirely, with the movie highly likely depicting him as the vampire slayer that we all want him to be. As for which character we could see make an appearance in the movie outside of Ali's Eric Brooks, his appearance is probably certain, seeing how he is the one to smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. However, on the more serious side of things, he was the one link that connected Eric Brooks to the MCU with the aforementioned unconventional debut. Speaking of the supernatural and where his last endeavors have taken him, there is also the Doctor Strange character with Benedict Cumberbatch in the role, who will most likely make at least a cameo appearance in the movie especially judging by the fact that he was a prominent member of the Midnight Suns team in the comics. The other cast members that could take a part in the movie might include Laura Donnelly's Elsa Bloodstone after the events of Werewolf by Night and her connection to the supernatural, as well as the main anti-hero of the Halloween special Jack Russell, played by special Gail Garcia Burnell and his trusty companion Man-Thing. The world of Marvel monsters is yet another sphere where Marvel would head next, probably during MCU's Phase 5, which is heavily due to the fact of the Blade movie coming after the events of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which will officially mark the start of Phase 5 of the MCU. All in all, is a good enough established lore for Blade's debut in the MCU, not only because it could easily explain Blade's existence in the MCU but also why they never appeared, as they left Earth at some point after their Byzantine Empire era heyday and headed to space, bringing them into contact with Korg's people, the Cronins. No matter the way the vampires, particularly Blade, will be introduced, get ready to learn a whole lot more about the vampires in the MCU, what kind of a life they are living, where their loyalty lies, and what makes them tick to do the things they do. See you in the next video.